Waratah Florist with Pauline Batuti and her daughter Anne Andre celebrating 50 years of Waratah Florist here in Earl. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, before we get into the florist side, uh, your late husband, Paul uh, Batuti, uh, Came out, to, came out to Australia very, very young. He worked with um, his uncle Bill Lacanidis, who had a, a flower farm and had a shop in Paddington. Even though he went on to work in factories and whatever, he always wanted to open up his own business. True. Was it always going to be flowers? Always. Always? Always, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> so he opens up his first trailer in town Yes. Okay, at the uh, under the Union Carbide uh, building on Hunter uh, Liverpool Street, yes. opposite Hyde Park. Correct. Okay, uh, and you, Pauline, start helping with arrangements for weddings slowly, slowly, and other occasions yes. from home. Now, the turning point, the big turning point in all of this is when he does the front window display because he's getting a lot of connections in, in the city. Yeah. And he does the, the uh, front window display for the Carlton Ricks Hotel. Correct. Huge exposure. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Right? Yes. Right. And, you know, everything skyrockets after that. Yes. You know, you start, you start getting, you know, like, you know, offers from uh, the Sheridan Windworth Hotel, the Admiral Cup Dinner, the Jockey Clubs. Correct. So you need a base. You can't Absolutely. do it at home. No. No, we couldn't, we couldn't do, do it anymore. No, it, was, no, no, it got too, too big to be doing it at home. Right, so you start looking. I think you went to Mascot initially. Yes. Right, uh, but an opportunity comes to, to buy this place here where we are standing at the moment. Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's a lot closer to home because you are a through and through old girl. Yeah. Right, you were born here, you grew up here, you got yeah. married here, your first house was in Johnson Street, yeah. your kids are growing up in Hillwood. Yes. So this was a great opportunity. True. Right. I knew everyone. And everyone knew me. The, the fact is that, you know, your uh, your, your family, your, you know, your father, father, your dear, and your mother, Evdokia, ran the fish and chip shop, the fish shop here, the old fish market for 30 years. So yes. you're local and through and through. That's correct. <laughs> right. Um, now, with business growing, but you, you know, you've got the help of your sister, Mary. Very okay, much so. very much so. Like, I think the, the routine was for Paul to uh, rush to the, uh, to the uh, markets and pick up the flowers, Bring them here, do the arrangements. I know you went to other places like churches to make the arrangements mm -hmm. there, but this was the base. Yes. And you know, your sister Mary would do drop offs every day in, yes. in town. Uh, you also had Elsie Whitney yes. here in the early days. Yes. She closed her own flower shop and, and came here to work. True. Right? Uh, so things are really looking up uh, there. And you, I think you opened up two more trailers in town. Yes. Uh, one in Hunter Street and one in Circular Key. I think Paul's yes. nephew, Peter Gondilios, works the kiosk in Hunter Street and uh, Uncle Peter is at Circular Key. How did you manage all this? Oh, it wasn't actually me. Paul was the one that did all that running around with the trailers. I had to concentrate on this business here in order. So that was a separate thing for me. I wouldn't have been able to cope if I had to do that as well. Well, there must have been a, a, there must be a great teamwork between you. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. definitely. We were a team. That's right. Absolutely. And, uh, and what was Paul like as a team player? Uh, he was the boss. <laughs> he was definitely the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And, um, so, and the thing is, at the time, at the time, uh, Pauline, what were people looking for, like, at the time? Like, what kind of, have arrangements changed in 50 years? What were, what were people looking for? Value for money. Mm -hmm. um, being fair, I think. Being fair. Fair in business. Fair right? in business. Um, yeah, I think someone basically that trust someone them. like, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and who being could, trustworthy. And who better to trust than someone local that they know, know they've grown up with? Yes, and the Greek community, community. that uh, supported, supported us over the, the years. All the, um, the churches and the, 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 the Greek communities, the clubs. 
they all supported us. Yeah, but you know something, let me let's return back to Paul because yes. like, the late Paul was a social butterfly. Oh absolutely. <laughs> right? And he uh, I, I you know, you come up with stories of him being the drummer of now Steady. I just don't understand how he'd finish a gig at two o'clock and be at four o'clock at the markets to pick up the flowers. Did he ever sleep? Very little. Right? So, and you know, he was proud of his Greek heritage and he was he was a man with shallow pockets. Yes. You know, always there for a cause. Yes. Always there to help out. There's great stories of you know charity soccer matches where with celebrities like you know Harry Michael, Andrew Pascalides, George Zanikin, and Les Murray, and he would be the goalkeeper. <laughs> Right. Yes. <laughs> right. So he was always there. Yes. Like so, I, I I get I get that you know the you know the Greek community supported you, but Paul supported the community too. Absolutely. It was a mutual thing. Absolutely. Right. Um, at one point, at one point, I think the late Paul opens up a a, a, a fly shop in Dulwich Hill. Correct. Uh, next to the uh, Walter and Son funeral parlour, but you know he's he's ill at the time. You know, like, he, but he doesn't give up. He just keeps on going. Uh, the show must go on. <laughs> that's it. That was basically that was that's his attitude. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The right. show must go on. The show must go on, no matter what. No matter what. Uh, can I ask, uh, you know, being a, a good Greek family that you are, uh, was it always expected for the children, Anne and John, to help out? Were they were they around at you know school holidays? Were they around? Uh, what was it like growing up? In the family business, end. Well, look, we had to we had to conform to it, it revolved around the business, as it does for my children too now. So it's it, it wasn't easy. Like we'd come from school when we were very young, and be whisked off. Aunty Mary take us then to her house where our grandmother helped raise us, cook meals, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was definitely it couldn't have been done without the extended family. It was impossible. And you, you got some great stories where Dad would wake up early in the morning? Early in the morning. Uh, well, usually, the, the, the funny stories are when my brother and I used to get dragged off to um, Botany Cemetery on Mother's Day morning. We'd be sent into the graveyard to collect buckets of water to fill up. It was frightening, but we did it. So there were a few sacrifices along the way, but at the end of the day, it's a successful business and we're very proud of it. The thing about when, when, when a business experiences longevity like you guys, 50 years, you must have these really strong connections to community. Oh, like you must have three generations of customers coming through. True, definitely. And that loyalty, that love, that care, you know. And you know, you know, and, and let's be frank about the florist business. It's not just about the joys, you know, births and weddings. It's also in sorrow, also with funerals, you know. So you see people. Well, that's right, and that's how these families feel connected to us because we've done all their occasions. We've actually done some people's weddings two or three times. <laughs> so it's happened. It has happened. That has happened too. And then yeah. their children get born and they do get their christenings done and their other functions and then those children grow up and get married. And, you know, 50 years, how do you look back on those 50 years here in Earl as Waratah Florist? How do you look back? Do you, do you feel that it was, it was, it was hard? And I you... hate to stay home. I like to be in my business. I like to be here serving the customers, speaking with the people that I know. It's if I wasn't here, what would I be doing? Well, there's, there's an immense, I'm immensely proud of the the Greek community. They all support support us. A lot of the the clubs, the churches, um, a lot of different what do you call it? Organisations. They support us, we support them. I'm proud of that and the, the community of all. They've stood by us through the whole, whole time. And like I said earlier, um, Pauline, you, you, you were born here, you grew up here, you went to school, okay, you went to King's Road High School, or, or, or you yeah. get that, right? First year at Oakland. <laughs> right. But uh, you, you know, you've grown here, you've grown old here. That's right. Um, what does it all mean to you? Home. It's just home. Where else would I be? 
I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I'm, I'm not interested in anywhere else. But I love the way you say, you know, you drive up Hamish Road every day. Every day. And you think, wow, what a wonderful place. And I know in, in that house is so-and-so, in that house is so-and-so, in that house is so-and-so. You know what I mean? I know everybody. It's a village. All it's a village. Yeah. Yeah. What, what more do you want? Okay, October 20, 2023, 50 years. Yes. Okay, 50 years. Incidentally, in 1973 was the uh, opening of the Opera House. So, Correct. okay, on the, on the same scale here, we've got 50 years of Waratah Flores. And, and Pauline, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. And many happy returns. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.